welcome to part two. So I want to get this thing fired up. So like I said, I've gotten the two blue here done. I mean, the switches were fixed. So I just went through, I'm cleaning the, connect the connectors up here. Uh, I just used some rubbing alcohol on my brush to clean the outside out. They're really dirty. But I'm going to use some of my deoxid on the, on the internal contacts. Even though I actually ran sort of like a, a little wire brush in there. But still, I mean, I can tell that it's not even, they're super dirty. So I've, I've even been actually running out alcohol like that, but if you're not familiar with this deoxid stuff, it was actually, I think it's a lot of radio guys on, on here on, on YouTube use this stuff. But it's good for cleaning like the switches, like the internal switch switches here, you know. Um, the VFOs. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, I use it in all kinds of like switch contacts, but it's incredible um, how many things I fix with that stuff right there. Um, all right, so I'm going to put a little bit on this uh, connector here and then I run it a couple times. I feel like these, I think they're so 15, 239, I think, like the SO239 connector, I think. Um, I don't feel like they're getting very good contact, though. Um, so I'm going to see if I can bend the pins. I mean, they are getting some contact, but not great. Yeah, so I'm going to do some, uh, I'm going to fire this up, see if it works. That way I can check the polarity and fix the light here. Um, that actually is an SSB switch. So last night I was testing it. I'll go through this radio individually, I'll take it apart. There's some other mods on this thing that I'm not familiar with. So actually, I'm not familiar with any of these mods. I'm not a radio guy. So, but I actually have a spectrum analyzer, so I, I can see like um, what channels these things are broadcasting on. So I can see that it's definitely it's lower side band, not upper side band. All right, so I'm ready to do my first test here. So I got the CB radio connected to the amp power supply. Then I have my little watt meter, which only goes up to 100 watts. Um, it's like some cheapo little FDR meter. Then I have my um, RTL, um, it's not like a, I mean, it's RT, it's not the horrible one, but it's not like an SDR play, which I have over there. Um, so I just have it running locally on this machine right here. Um, yeah, in the future videos, I'm going to do like a Raspberry Pi conversion to my, uh, SDR play. That way I can stream over IP over to this computer. All right, let's turn this thing on. Um, actually, even with it off, it should be in path and mode, so I'm going to do a quick, uh, Test. All right, all right. Um, modulation test. Modulation test. This is surprising. This radio is really dialed in. Um, all right, so we know it works. Power on. Preamp. I know this radio is a little touchy. Hear that? So it makes me so when I turn the preamp on, I don't hear any more static on the radio. I want to back up, <laughs> do a quick mic test. So in theory, what should happen is that relay should click. All right, and you can see my spectrum analyzer over there. All right, it worked. Except it reset my <laughs> it reset my um, my RTL STL. All right, let's see what's going on with that thing. Oh yeah, it's off the meter. But I'm looking for, I'm looking at it right here. So let's do it without the amp. See, that's about normal right there. So when the amp is not on, um, it should be, it should be pass through. Like the contacts will close on the, on the thing, so it's, it's actually pass through. Okay, with the amp on. Wow. That's pretty nuts. All right. Let's take a look, close look at the relays. Man, I know these aren't great cables right here. I wonder how the preamp doesn't work. I mean, the, the static you hear is on my SDR, not the... I mean, I know this, this meter sucks. I actually, sorry, I have the wrong uh, 10 watt scale. Should have been the 100 watt scale. All right, so that's putting up about 80 watts. I don't know, this thing's kind of, <laughs> kind of pointless, but 
you know, but it's not that many people talking about it. I mean, I, I heard some skip here today, but it's, like I said, this is more of like emergency preparedness. I'm not probably not going to talk on it. So, um, I don't know, it was fun. It was, it's a fun project, I guess. Um, so now i got to figure out the polarity. I'm going to hook my multimeter up to this uh, LED and see, see which side is positive and negative. Uh, this thing gets pretty hot. No joke. Um, so I actually put my multimeter here on the LED to see what the polarity was so I can switch it out and finish it. But I'm gonna th I think I'm going to 3D print a, a top cover for it. Even though I actually have the metal one, the one that can actually mount. Like an undermount, you know? A mount and cover in one, you know, just match up these screw holes. I mean, this thing gets pretty warm, so I might have to use that ABS or something. Yeah, it's blazing. Well, it's crazy hot. And I'm not, I'm not even talking about it. I Man. Alright, so right there. So I know, the, I know what the polarity is now. So I mean, the, the polarity of the LED right there. Yeah, then my fan's kicking off on the, on the power supply. You know, I might have to design some kind of fan box for this thing. And this thing is crazy hot, and I wasn't even probably them with it, you know? Just doing some audio checks and stuff, you know? Um, maybe put like a 60 millimeter fan or something like that, some kind of, um, what do I have? Like, I have a whole box of fans, design a shroud, like a shroud for it, you know? Uh, like a top cover and shroud because I don't even if I were to design like 3d print something like, like a top cover I guess this gets so hot it might melt the plastic I right, got the new blue transfer or the transmit LED. Yes, yeah, it's overloading my, my uh, SDR dongle there. So it keeps on resetting it um, Cool, so now I can figure out what's up with the preamp just kind of, it's all over the place, so it's like, um, all right, so I don't know if that's normal or not for one of these, but I mean, even just not even transmitting, just sitting here for like an hour, <clears throat> it's pulling, making this thing extremely hot. I said, not even transmitting, nothing's on. The CB is not even on, but this whole thing is blazing. I mean, I don't. I mean, there could be a short, but I mean, it seemed like it was transmitting all of a sudden. But um, one thing I, with the with the what's it called the preamp that I'm trying to troubleshoot. So the preamp, the positive wire feeds back and activates this relay right here. But the issue is, I don't know if this is actually mechanical relay or solid state relay. So I'm trying to so activate the preamp. Oh, that time it worked. Interesting. Um, huh, that was weird. Earlier really wasn't working, so maybe the heat of this thing feed up this relay? Wait. When would you think that would get louder? Off. Alright, let's check this out. So before this thing was pulling from the power supply, the my what's it called? My bench top's power supply was pulling about 1.5 amp, fully loaded. But this thing's getting up to 120 degrees. So it's not as high as 120. So let me see if this makes any difference. Put a fan here. All right. So in the process of trying to figure out this preamp thing. I noticed that these were all kind of, see this thing was kind of jacked up and they were kind of tied in together and it was bound to this. So I got a new uh, capacitor and this, the schematics are kind of hard to read. At least I could read this one, but I can't read this one. I think this is a 10 microfarad. Um, but it's hard to know what the scale because it doesn't even say what it is. Um, this one's 0001 or 0 0.001. This is a 1 capacitor. But yeah, I'm just... Um, yeah, it was all tied in and kind of wrapped in weird. So I'm going to replace that. It looks like it's all broken on the legs, but... So there's definitely something going on with the, the receive function, you know? I mean, I know that this thing, this thing would have to be working because when I power it on the uh, preamp, it gets quieter. So I think we, I feel like there's something wrong in the logic here. There's some kind of component that's... It's basically, it goes open circuit. So I feel like there's something going on in the circuit. All right, so it's been pretty active on your CD for the last couple of days. Um, I'm actually picking up people from 
I'm actually in Southern California, close to me, so. And I'm picking up people from, um, you know, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, um, all over the place. So, um, all right, so in the, I'm not, I can't remember where I, what part of the video I'm in. So, um, take a look at this. So, power on. So, I've tracked down the issue with the preamp circuit. Uh, I think there's either this relay is not working or there's something else in the logic, but I've traced this logic. So, this is the preamp logic. Turn it down. So this is the preamp logic right here, and this is the SSB filter right here, or I think it's the SSB delay. So when you flip that switch on, um, it creates like a delayed circuit. So look at it, it's kind of locked up. That's weird. So, so when I turn it, when it's on, let's go take a look at that. So SSB off, power on, that doesn't activate. SSB on turn it on and it activates it. it almost puts it in transmit mode all right so i've been messing with this for a couple days and i've tracked the um preamp it, the preamp circuit seems like it's in this area with that transistor and then the ssb uh delay i think it's the delay not really filter but a delay i think it, it delays um so my my theory is that, like i said it's going open circuit so there's something wrong with this relay or trans, there's something wrong with this component, but there's an open circuit, I think. Because if I do this, take a look at the RF power. You can also notice, like, see, RF power goes way down. So, my theory is when it's off, right? So there must be, the relays must be doing something, because I wouldn't be getting that. Um, so I feel like it's going open circuit. Um, turn that down. A lot of cars driving by right now. All right, so in the default off position, these things should just be bridged. You know what I mean? For the receive, right? These two will be pretty much bridged. There might be a couple of capacitors in, in, in between, but mainly this thing is just creating a bridge circuit on the receive. So it's basically like not having any sort of circuitry at all. It's just it's opened up straight open like that. Uh, like I said, then when you transmit, it opens up the relay and it sends it through a different path. But um, Yes, I feel like there's something wrong with logic. So I'm going to test her test some points. Um, I want to figure out, I'm going to test the, I'm going to basically test the relay. I'm going to put my, do continuity test between the points and the actual contact. I, I can kind of look at the schematic. I know where to point on either in front of a capacitor. So I want to test the relay to see if it's actually contacting. So it's a double pull relay. So there's two points of contact. And use two points of contact to make this thing open or send the circuit down into the circuit. So if I can test the relay and the relay works, hopefully all this makes sense. Makes sense to me. But if the relay is actually working and I can verify that, that I know it's either something wrong or there's a bad component here. And even though I've tested all resistors or there's this transistor is bad, something's not working right in here, you know? So this, so this should be louder when I turn it on, not quieter. So... From what I read online, too, is a lot of people actually have issues with these preamps. It's pretty rare you can find one of these old amps where the preamp works. Um, all right, but I want to get that going because I want to... I've designed a custom case for it. And I have a fan mount, an active cooler fan mount here that goes like this. Kind of sits on top of it, but it's not done yet. I, I still have to make some modifications. I might... This is a full enclosure. But I also might design a half enclosure, so just a fan mount on the bottom. So this slides through like that. I'll show it to you when I'm done. And or do like a half, half and keep the top mount lid and just do a bottom active cooling from the bottom. But actually I just I put the fan on it just for a couple minutes and it dramatically cooled this thing, even on low speed. So there's multiple speeds on this fan. So even on low speed, this thing was super cool. So all right, awesome. I'll be able to get the little case cover off. I had to hit it with my little exacto knife, and then I finally got kind of under it with my screwdriver, and it's popped up. So awesome! Um, now I can see what's actually happening in there, and test the actual contacts right here. Let's turn the power back on. Um, turn the radio on. I can see them both moving. If you can see that, it's a different position, maybe. 
Well, I need to just test the continuity there. Okay, because that should... So it brings it in. That brings it out. Alright, I'm gonna get my multimeter and test between here and here and see if I'm getting contact. Yeah, this deoxy stuff is incredible. I've actually every time that's time I fix my electronic, I, I reference this stuff because it works so damn good. All right, I'm gonna put a little, uh, couple of drops in the contacts. I should probably turn this off first. <laughs> probably a good idea. Let it soak for a little bit. Yeah, it just seems like it's, I mean, at first it wasn't working at all, then it kind of became intermittent. Just because I think it hadn't moved for so many years, you know? That it was, the contacts were st pretty sturdy, I guess, but, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, it's funny that I always know I'm talking, uh, talking where I can hear people from the south because I can hear the accents. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so far, it's, now that I let it, the stuff sit for a little bit, it's, it's way more reliable now. Let's, let's turn this to a channel. It's noise talking on. Alright. Yeah, it's really, I mean, in good conditions right now. Funny. Look at that. It actually makes a big difference, too, in what you can hear remotely. Like... So if you're having the same issue on your app, you know, the preamp, because I hear, like I said, like, these things always fail, so, um, yeah, these things are expensive, so I'm glad I was able to open it up and just clean the contacts. So, yeah, if you have the same app and you're having the same issue with the preamp, try to get in there and check that first. So, yeah, it was a kind of, at first it didn't work, then it became intermittent, and then I, now it's really consistent that I have the, the deox on there. Put a link down below on that stuff. Alright, so this will be the end of uh, part two. And then part three, I'm going to do the uh, active cooler. So I haven't decided yet 100%, you know, if I'm going to keep the steel cover on there. Just because I'm thinking RF, um, RF shielding. But I might, I actually have some uh, copper foil. I could maybe put copper foil on the top. So, or I could say I could redesign a new bottom that doesn't cover the top half. But the reason why I had the top half on there is so I could seal and mount it. See the four holes? I could mount it up there on the top. So, all right, cool. Have fun. Yeah.